We are going to ask some questions from Professor Sasan Shekhar, who is the professor in charge of academic of BCE Bhagalpur. He has been working at Department of English since 1991. Besides English literature, he also did his post graduation in journalism from Delhi. He mentored a lot of students at BCE Bhagalpur. Professor Shekhar has attended a large number of academic programs at IITs and IIMs in India. So let's go. First question is from where you belong and what was your family background? When you have asked me where I belong to, yes, of course, I belong to one of the districts, uh, Supal. But then uh, I have been shaped uh, by different places. Different places have shaped my childhood, my sense and sensibility. So, like, if I say that I really belong to one place. it would be a kind of uh, blasphemy or it would be a kind of untruth speaking to you as we all know childhood is the most essential part of a person's life so please tell us any childhood memories which you think that affect you most oh there are many uh, and i have a very tenacious memory as a matter of fact people all around even in the family they tell me that uh, i have got a very Uh, a strong memory uh, if i dig in my memory all right well as i told you that i have uh, the many recollections about my childhood the strongest recollection i have is when uh, in dp vacation or summer vacation we used to go to our native place and when we used to go to our native place we would meet often the uh, childhood friends studying there in the village and with them i would go uh, about fishing uh, and then i would just play uh, gilli danda then uh, you know at that time well we we had different kinds of uh, entertainment as a matter of fact so those uh, recollections of early childhood they are very very strong in my uh, mind uh, as it distraction is the major issue in a student's life what type of distraction you faced in your student life oh yes it's a very good question uh, in fact now that i have become teacher and when i address the students i in emphasize on three elements one is your patience the other i talk about is uh, your curiosity and the third i talk about concentration ekagri chitta so all these three elements they are very very important in life uh, during our time maybe some 40 years back when i was a student well we had lesser number of uh, fewer number of uh, distractions but with the advent of uh, internet television uh, mobile phones well distractions have increased manifold so nowadays students they have lot of distractions it is very important that the students need to filter these distractions out and concentrate on their goal because what actually happens i always say that if you really want to do anything if you have decided upon your goal you just go ceaselessly about that goal and if you want to do this that if you want to be a good uh, son if you want to be a good husband if you want to be a good wife if uh, you want to be a good cricketer sometimes you want to be a good musician and also at the same time you want to be a good student so you cannot be so many things so first of all it is very important that you decide what you really want to do about it and you leave other things other things will follow so concentrate on one focus on one thing which you want to achieve in your life as a student we want to know about your student's life experience ah uh, yes as i told you earlier 
well, varied places and varied schools and colleges have uh, really shaped my sensibility. Uh, as a student, in fact, I began my career from uh, schooling career from Patna. Uh, thereafter, my father was transferred to Ranchi. And then for a brief period of time, I had to come to Munger there in July school. So I passed my matriculation at that time uh, from Munger Jila school. And uh, I did, I mean, reasonably well at the matriculation examination. And then I was admitted to Patna College uh, in Patna University. There I did my intermediate and then I was, uh, I mean, at that time I didn't know what to do, whether to go in for uh, science or engineering or uh, what. But finally, in fact, my family tradition is such my grandfather was a man of English. My father was a brilliant scholar of English. So I decided that I should pursue literature. And when I was admitted there in Patna College as an honors student in English, well, that became my sole preoccupation since then, uh, up till now. Uh, and then I did my post graduation in English uh, from Patna University. And immediately after that, well, I joined Sanjeeva's College, Ranchi, as a lecturer in English. So when I was appearing for the interview there in Sanjeeva's College, I was very, very young. So it was very difficult for uh, anyone to distinguish between a teacher and the student. So in the interview, the principal, I remember Father Cronin told me, asked me this question, well, how is it that you are going to teach the students uh, when uh, the students are almost of your age. So I, my reply was, well, uh, Father, this is not my fault. And uh, of course, I was uh, selected and I joined Sanjeevas College, Rachi. From Sanjeevas College, I went to Delhi. I took admission there in postgraduate diploma in, uh, in journalism. I worked for Doordarshan also that time in Delhi. I worked for Sunday Observer as also I taught at uh, Young Men's Christian Association uh, for nearly four years before I was admitted to this uh, BPSC, Bihar Public Service Commission. And uh, my first posting was made there at uh, BC Bhagalpur. Since then, well, I have been, I have been teaching uh, students uh, at Bhagalpur College of Engineering. Attachment towards opposite gender is the most common thing between students. What do you think about this? When you are a student and in, uh, as a student, well, uh, you mix up with boys as well as girls you have there in the college. So I don't believe in it is uh, uh, he is a boyfriend, he is a girlfriend. Uh, a friend is a friend is a friend. So how is it that we are going to distinguish uh, this kind of uh, kind of, um, I mean, uh, this kind of question that he, uh, she happens to be my girlfriend or he happens to my boyfriend. Well, friend is a very, you know, past relationship. I mean, it is uh, most past, most sacred relationship. Friendship is the most sacred relationship. It uh, rather crosses all barriers and all that. So, it doesn't, in fact, it doesn't matter to me whether he is a boyfriend or uh, she is a girlfriend. In the college, well, I had umpteen number of friends. And especially, you know, um, uh, when you are a student of literature, well, that class of uh, English literature is a mixed crowd. Well, there are number of boys, the number of girls, and they were all very good friends of mine. I still cherish that friendship. Even now. Did you have a girlfriend in a call? I told you uh, that, uh, well, I have my friends as boys, I have my friends as girls. And still I um, have that kind of friendship with all those girls and boys. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if you uh, put it within inverted comma as girlfriend or a boyfriend, well, uh, I, I don't see uh, that there is, should be any kind of distinction between a boyfriend and a girlfriend. It is a modern coinage. It is a modern coinage that, well, he has a 
girlfriend or uh, she has a boyfriend and when you have a girlfriend uh, then you feel well you are smarter enough or if she has a boyfriend well she is smart enough nothing like that well i have uh, friends as boys as well as girls in every person's life there is a phase of struggle what was yours i would like to be very candid and honest because our entire journey you know life is beset with problems hardships struggles strife uh, life is not a bed of roses it is a uphill task and i am no exception to it uh, i have my phase of struggle uh, because my parents they wanted me to go in for civil services and uh, i started preparing for civil services examination and for that matter i went to delhi also i got myself admitted in some of the coaching classes i remember and i really tried hard to get into the civil services but sometimes you know uh, you are cut out for something else uh, and uh, when i finally could not succeed in the civil services examination as i s uh, then i really in fact uh, came to the conclusion that uh, civil services is not my cup of tea and i chose i mean uh, to become a teacher teacher of english and my taste is firmly planted in literature but again in fact what actually happened that at that time when i was selected uh, for the post of uh, assistant professor in the department of english in the engineering college i thought well i would not be teaching literature there i would be teaching only technical english to the students but as said earlier uh, necessarily you don't marry your first love in life and uh, but then i have kept my association alive with literature by reading reading and reading and still i devote my time uh, to reading good novels dramas poetry or anything that is really literature and i have uh, i have a fascination for language good language tell us about the most inspirational incident of your life there are many but uh, as you have asked this question let me in fact cite one example uh, at the ma examination when the ma examination in patna university it was declared i got a first class in english and when you get a first class in english uh, everyone would just look upon you with awe and wonder well he or she is the kind of person who got a first class i got a first class and well my head of the department dr r c prashad was there sitting in his chamber with the gravity of a nestle and everyone would not in fact enter even his room in his chamber i wrote an application i wanted a testimonial and you know uh, there was one word uh i wrote i need a certificate or i need a testimonial and the clerk or the pn in fact sent that application to the head of the department and immediately it struck my mind that well this word need should have been replaced by the word require and you know even he pointed this out and thereafter i didn't have courage to collect that beautiful testimonial which he wrote for me but i remember those lines which he wrote as testimonial about me he loved me but then i didn't have the courage because i did not use the proper word so i asked those students my students now that proper words at proper places is very very important you must be very very careful about the choice of words whenever you commit yourself in papers will be very very specific about the choice of words because a particular word that you use well it has shades of meaning so use a particular word that is uh, incident is very seminal in my mind till now so whenever i speak or when i write well i am very very careful about the use of words 
whether you come in this profession by chance or by choice i told you earlier well uh, sometimes you owe too much to the opinion of the world too much to the authority of your parents my parents always wanted to me to go in for civil services ias ips allied services but i was cut out for something else and there was a time in fact nowadays it is uh, difficult students they take up a job more as a necessity than a choice for me well teaching uh, was more a kind of choice for me well i had other options but i chose teaching as my love if you are not in this profession what type of profession you want to be involved in it's a question uh, at at that time some 30 years back because now i'm i have spent nearly 3 decades more than 3 decades uh, in this vocation in this teaching vocation at that time if you had asked well i could have given you a different kind of answer uh had i not been a teacher uh, then uh, i would have sat at home uh, read literature read widely and uh, read widely and widely you could have seen me with a long beard only reading and reading i would have grown only wiser in life but of course well i couldn't have earned the way i am uh, i have earned now but i could have kept my body and soul together but then uh, i would not have divorced myself from literature failure and the success are the two faces of a coin have you ever faced failure in your life many many failures in fact the entire what i am today while well, i am standing on the edifice of failures could say that i have been flirting with failures in my life but then uh, failures they came to me always as i open it they always taught me a lesson and what i am today it is all because of failures so uh, i have never been discouraged by uh, failures which i met in my life failure came as a blessing in disguise for me so that's why i told you that the entire edifice of my life is standing on these failures failures are, they are the part of your life if you have always met with success 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 well life is all monotonous it is failure that in fact introduces you to the essence of life to the quint essence of life so failures are the necessary part of life and after meeting failures when you get success that success is so sweet sonorous tell us what was your achievements in your life oh yes uh, my achievements are my students now that i have spent uh three decades in teaching career when i go to any of the places there in bangalore uh bombay delhi or any of the places when i meet students when the students they contact me they say sir well uh, i have been working as president of exchange sir i have reached the top position there in bhabai atomic research institute uh there are students who uh are working as ias officers ips officers passing out from bhagalpur college of engineering well i consider to be uh, this as my greatest achievement my students sitting at the top of the world you had mentored a lot of students in your profession so is there any student with whom you have a memorable moment there are there are now that i have spent nearly 3 decades more than 3 decades in teaching i have many many memorable uh moments with the students uh even now i remembered some of uh, the brilliant students who left an indelible imprint on my mind 
as students. Uh, I could remember Sachin Jaisawal, who is uh, teaching at Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Uh, Prashant Anand, who is uh, IPS officer. Bernali Ghosh, she is a renowned scientist in the world, a great seismologist. Mozahida Masroor, another brilliant student there in uh, working with Bark. I have, I have lot many students, hundred students now occupying the places of pride in different organizations, in multinationals, private organizations, public sectors, government organizations. These students, they have always taught me, taught me to be a good teacher. They have taught me to be a good human being. So directly or indirectly, those students, all these students, they have influenced me to become a good teacher, to become a good human being. Now, when you ask about those moments, memorable moments, once I just uh, delivered a lecture to my satisfaction in one of the first year classes at engineering college. So here at BC Bhagalpur. So after completion of the lecture, I could see the students' eyes sparkling, sparkling with light. And as I came out with the register and chalk in my hand, one of the students, they came running towards me. He asked me very innocently, Sir, can I think like you? Can you teach me how I can think like you? I told him, look here, boy. Well, this I cannot teach you how to think like me. But then I can help you to think in your own particular way. This is what I can think. This was a very memorable moment for me. In states like Bihar, most of the students approaches to government job rather than a private job. What is your thought about this? Uh, yes, uh, for nearly more than 15 years, I was a placement officer of, at Bhagalpur College of Engineering. And as also, I was the placement coordinator of all the engineering colleges in the state at the Department of Science and Technology. And when I was a placement officer, I tried very hard to initiate the students into placement drive. I had the privilege of arranging campus recruitment of all the major concerns of Tata Group. Infosys, Vipro, Kirloskir, BML, Airtel, Vodafone, all these companies they came to Bhagalpur College of Engineering for campus recruitment. So when I asked for the feedback from these companies about the students, they said, well, the mindset of the students in Bihar is that they prefer government jobs because to them, Government means, government job means security, security for life. This is what that has been embedded in their mind. Even their parents, their neighbors, society. They have injected that kind of, you know, within inverted comma, poison in their mind. That, okay, it is very, very safe. It is very, very secure. But let me tell you, life is not about only security. You have to create different line also. You don't follow the crowd. So you choose a vocation which suits your taste, which suits your skill, which suits your mind. That is what is important. So after globalization, world opened up. You have umpteen number of jobs. Had Sundar Pichai thought of uh, a government job, he wouldn't have been there as CEO. So, there are examples who have, where the students, they have broken the barrier of getting into government jobs. And they have made name, fame, because they have chosen a profession where they could annex territories of new experiences. So just break that mindset. How was your experience in college till now? It has been a good experience. It has been a bad experience. It has been a good bad experience. It has been a bad good experience. 
uh, the time I was offered teaching in the college, I joined with a lot of hopes that yes, I was going to join, take up my assignment in a very good college where I would be teaching bright students. And yes, of course, I was teaching at that time some bright students. Slowly and gradually, I mean, for a certain period of time, for a decade or so, there has been a kind of uh, deterioration in the entire education system, not only in this college, but everywhere in the country. All aspects of life, this deterioration touched almost all aspects of life. Maybe it is medical, even society was polluted, a lot of corruption had happened. Even in education, well, there was a lot of corruption. And there is a coin, a fridge that we have learned that is gross corruption in learning. So, of course, there was deterioration in education. So, it has been uh, like uphill and downhill journey, ups and downs in education. So, here, I mean, some of the brighter students, they had always been here. And, of course, some of the students who indulged in nasty politics. So, ultimately, they ruined their career. Four years is a time to shape the growth of your destiny, your aim, your goal. But instead, when you indulge yourself in a dirty politics of caste, creed and all, that is very depressing, absolutely depressing. So, I exhort the students, I advise the students to rise above the pettiness of such things. Only then you could uh, go very high in life. You know, any organization is known by its academics. Educational institution is known by its academics. As a professor in charge academic, I would like this college to have a very meticulous and regular class attended by a large number of students. If a class is held, at least 90% of the attendance must be there. Number two, examination must be held in time and without any malpractices. No use of unfair means in the examination. Third, extracurricular activities is a must. Any engineering graduate receiving a degree after four years, after the completion of four years in the college, is not the be end and the be all. It is very important that in four years, students, they participate regularly in dramatics, quiz, group discussion, debates, uh, then uh, technical quizzes, then uh, sports, and uh, the students, nowadays, it is very important that beside this classroom reading, the students must be exposed to the outside world. Outside world means the world of the industry, where the students would be joining after four years. So regularly, there must be a kind of measure or ways by which students could be sent to different industries and they have the practical exposure of uh, these industries. That is very, very important. And uh, students, they also need to be sent to different engineering colleges of national repute to represent this college in different technical events organized at IITs, NITs and all. Only then, these engineers, they uh, become full-fledged engineers. Their mind opens up. So, that is very, very important. As a professor in charge academic, I want that there must be an atmosphere of, you know, education, study, I mean, students holding, you know, always uh, books and notebooks in their hand and walking with uh, great pride. 
because all these students they happen to be the ambassadors of this college so this is how i want as a professor in charge academic to the growth of this college if uh, the government has introduced ncc or nss in the colleges in the universities they have introduced this with some valid reason when you read the preamble of uh, the constitution of ncc you see that it talks of those ideals which are necessary for the growth of the student for example discipline now discipline emanates from ncc also regularity you know physical well being uh emotional health uh, well being all these elements they emanate from uh, participating in the activities of ncc but as a ncc cadet you don't need to devote all your time and all your energy in the pursuit of ncc but then be learn in fact what is best there in ncc so ncc is important if it is not uh, indispensable today's generation student wants to do their own startup rather than following a traditional path of getting a well paid job do you think getting success in this field depends on good fortune fortune favors the brave so is the adage the maxim this is the proverb and this proverb is not based on untruth this startup program was probably launched by the our beloved prime minister it is said that that students pass out from the colleges and they are left with no jobs or students they are unemployable i tell you that this startup was initiated in the country with a view to generate generate jobs so startups they are linked with your creativity developing your skill now government has many many plans if you go to the portal of startups you find that government has given you umpteen opportunities to create your own job for that you need to have some idea because nowadays idea moves the world so try to think try to uh, introspect create something a uh, novel idea and try to implement those things and once you implement those things naturally well you will find that uh something great has come up now when you try to say that well fortune or money is important money is important no doubt but much more important is idea how you have generated the idea and once you have generated the idea well other things will follow money will come fame will come create idea or jab aap idea create karte hain to world itna bada hai this world is big enough ki fortune to aa hi jayega aapke paas last but not the least question what are the message that you want to convey to the student uh, well i am not a philosopher uh, who would send the message my message to the students has always been and even today now it is very straight forward coming from my heart i always wish my students good luck but at the same time i want my students to devote all his energy all his time towards excelling themselves in studies in extracurricular activities with a religious sense of devotion that is what is very important and decide your goal early in the second year itself whether you want to do your gate examination qualify the gate examination you want to go for psus you want to follow 
the dream of your parents to go in for government jobs and after that demand heavy dowry or you want to be the creator of jobs that means you have your own startup you want to join civil services so decide very early on and then go whole hog about achieving that goal filtering all the distractions which you uh, talked earlier don't go into those distractions single minded devotion well this is what i have to achieve this is what you have to achieve and besides this most important is i want my students to be a very good human being well you may be a good engineer you amass good health enormous wealth you may be may be having fleet of cars you may be having multiplexes after 20 years but if you do not become a good human being you don't have the element of kindness if you don't have the element of benevolence if you don't have the feeling for others that is empathy empathy then the very purpose of life is defeated uh, it doesn't carry any meaning so besides being a good engineer a powerful engineer a practicing engineer having a rolling in wealth rolling in wealth earning money left and right be a good human being genuine a uh, good human being with a wealth of good nature and a heart of gold in you this is what i want to have my students